Now then, I hope you enjoyed home life in lockdown 18. And this is the next edition, home life in lockdown 19. And as the title suggests, we're still in lockdown in so much as certain businesses are closed, other ones aren't. Um, but we're, we've got some movement restrictions and wearing of masks etc and social distancing and I've never had a problem with social distancing anyway anyway so here we go it's early February and this will be a brief description of all the things that happened this month yeah, hopefully you will see that the weather will improve and it's about time it did uh, generation from solar and wind will improve especially the solar as the days get longer and the sun gets higher and we just get all those benefits and uh, and we feel more joyful so let's look forward to the unfolding of spring So it's a lot sunnier today and we've just come along and put a, a second row here. So this is a shelter belt we planted whew, 10 years ago. Um, but it's time to extend it and the sun is behind me at the moment and it is about half past 11. So these will get a reasonable amount of sun. You'd think if it was next to that shelter belt, it wouldn't, but obviously it is. So we're, we're just moving on, getting some more planted. I don't want to turn round because I'll be facing the sun then. But just here's an interesting thing, just through here. And you may have got a hint of this when we were here last time. Here's one of the internal drainage board drains. They've just been along and picked out some of the weed. And the wind's behind me, so I'm gonna be careful of that, but there you get an idea. I've got some details about the internal drainage board. If I remember, I'll show you. It's like the millions of tons of water that they pump out every year. And here we've got a eucalyptus. It's grown from seed, died off in a real minus 20 about 10 years ago. But it's grown back up again and it's getting there quite nicely. And there's a car coming. So I've just cut that bit out. But these conifers are doing quite nicely. I mean, it's a shelter belt. keep planting a few every year right so before I start cutting some more firewood I will just uh, put an edge on these or just fettle the edge that will take me a few minutes 
If I do that, rather than doing that, if I go up the blade, then or along the tooth, I can then sharpen both sides at once. Whereas if you try and do the tooth that's facing this way from this side, you get that. Whereas if you do that, you can get them all from one side. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'll just touch those up and then we'll start cutting. So we're on with cutting firewood again. Um, I've got one stack behind me that's already gone and it's all broken up in the shed. And I'm just going to be getting on with the next one. They've been drying for about a year, year and a half, something like that, where they are. And uh, of course, they were brought in or uh, felled in the woods or brought into the yard as it were um, at least a year before that so we'll just uh, I'm talking to you now before I start the tractor up and then I'll just do a brief bit about that because you've all seen it before and then we'll crack on with something else There's the first barrel load and there's a lot of small stuff in here but that will be all right for next autumn so I'll just make sure that this area of the shed the woodshed we use first and those who haven't seen home life in lockdown last spring will be wondering what these uh, saw cuts are and it's where some of the bark is um, resistant to the flow of moisture like on that piece of cherry there then a couple of saw cuts will help it dry more but on that piece also there was a, a saw cut run down with a chainsaw down the log when it was felled and as you can see it's been drying around that saw cut as well Anyway, I'm going to crack on. I'll do, uh, I don't know, maybe four, five of these barrows. Just depends what happens, but that, then that'll be enough for one day. Right, it's another day. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace some trees along this end row. There's some ash up that far end that have... Um, failed as you see at the far end there if we can zoom in a bit we planted some trees finishing this line so we've got two lines and this is basically on the sort of northwest face of the this piece of field um, and you see there's some alders here that are getting up there quite nicely that is a walnut it's establishing um, there's a poplar that was just from a set which is just a, a cutting yeah so this is coming on um, one of the problems is we've got power lines here so we've got to uh, bear that in mind and in that blackthorn there there were some uh, silver birch 
and the power line, power line people came along and said uh, they wanted to prune them well I've felled them to a low level and they'll grow up again that way we get the firewood as well and as you can see it's been raining somewhat so we've got some standing water here hopefully if we get a bit of dry for two or three days that will go but yeah it's it's the nature of the beast we've had a wet um, winter and no drying time really same as last year really wet followed by wet and then a bit more wet and then one dry day and then more wet and over the field there there is some more planting we put that in that this year a little bit every year yeah trying to fill in I mean the, the main thing is it's a variable habitat and this is low nutrient status low impact grassland I mean we cut it once a year for hay but that's it so we let whatever grows grows and this is of equal benefit to woodland really this was highly degraded agricultural land you know viciously cropped with um, Brussels sprouts year on year on year just chemically farmed and the land was dead well it's coming back yeah. the uh, organic matter is rising just having the grassland there not putting any fertilizer on it or anything like that and just taking a crop off it and then of course as I've said before topping it so that it doesn't get too tall and all horrible in the bottom well when you top it of course all the the cuttings degrade and go into the soil so as we we're starting to plant trees uh, we're noticing soil life which is great I'm just moving into the wind so I don't know whether we will uh, get any noise in the camera but there you go that's a little bit of an update a bit more tree planting it is the first week in February right I'm gonna crack on so here's that internal drainage board newsletter some of you I thought might be interested in this we pay a drainage rate every year and it's based on the acreage so I'm just going to scroll down this and if you want to read it you'll have to stop from time to time but the one of the interesting bits is this bit right at the bottom and there's a number there and it is there we go 184 million million tons of water interesting grey skies and it's snowing but when you go beyond the trees it is horizontal snow it's blowing a gale out there just doesn't feel it round here so it's uh, another day and here's the uh, the amp meter for the solar so we're at about about 50 amps which is great yeah yeah cold panels fairly bright sun but you know light cloud but we're doing quite well thank goodness yeah it's taken ages to get to that you know we started November with the really bad uh, fog and mist and all that lot and the turbine is just doing a few amps but not a great deal but it's the solar from now on and we are the where are we we're the 9th of February that's solar you see it's gone down a bit because the clouds are starting to come over a bit but it'll come up again because as I say it's got little gaps in the light cloud but you know 30 amps is pretty good at 
48 volts or actually well that's the batteries but it's at 54 volts so uh, 30 amps is one and a half kilowatt so that's grand it's an absolute gorgeous day bright blue sun but very cold so the uh, the snow is melting off the panels where the sun meets it and of course bright sunshine and cold panels is very good generation because that one there hasn't quite started to melt yet and then we've got another load here that are still in shade so it's not happening yet but it will do I just wanted to show you that but you know the day long length is getting longer and the Sun is getting higher and we're starting to get these absolutely perfect days as long as you've got plenty of thick socks on otherwise your, your feet will get somewhat cold all right leave you at that and here's the main grid inverter and there we go 600 watts at the moment but that will go up as soon as the uh, clouds move over a bit the light cloud but we're generating so we're dead chuffed about that bit of a wiggly cam and it's the 21st of February and the uh, the snowdrops are out and can we see this there's a bumblebee out brilliant yeah the value of early spring flowers is not only in the beholding that is superb isn't it so yeah they're they're out it won't be long before more flowers are out and just down there in the distance there's a pile of firewood that wants collecting these snowdrops are obviously you can see they were planted there's three or four bumblebees out brilliant um, but you know the groups are getting bigger and we've got daffodils coming here won't be long before they're flowering in fact there's some there that have got uh, the flower bud showing there we go and then round here we've got the start of the bluebells problem with bluebells is the rabbits tend to like chewing the leaves not so much the flowers but the leaves anyway spring is springing as it were provide habitat yeah, I've been saying to people for years don't make the land pay for itself yeah if you buy a piece of land and then work it real hard you end up destroying it yeah, if you want to make a real contribution towards the environment then a piece of agricultural ground and change it back into habitat is is extreme is of extreme benefit as you can see here and then just down here we were back at the muck hill which was a huge great pile 20 odd years ago perhaps more than that and I've just been dumping some well a couple of months ago dumped a trailer load of horse manure there and we are back on to the the cycle again where I'm riddling some of this very old compost for seed compost so I'm just going to finish up with that
also that from I need a bit of something that's straight from there to there is 66 minus 39 is 15 so we need to be 15 off this back here we've got all sorts of weird calculations going on there and I'll clamp this on here and then I will just check all my measurements before we get any further noise alert right I've done a bit of fettling and um, beveled those edges and I think we've got it near enough 120 mil so clamp that together very strongly tack it and don't just run one bead all the way do a series of them too so you don't get too much heat in one place and it's time to uh, well we continue cutting next year's firewood and stacking it a bit every day or three times a week and it's surprising how much you get done without actually having to work very hard so it's the whole thing about turning in a, a big job into lots of little ones. Anyway, I'm just going to crack on with stacking this lot. Uh, this bay will be full in about another 10 barrow loads because this is a quite a big wheelbarrow. It's a double wheeled barrow, so it takes quite a lot. Anyway, I'm just going to crack on. So I've just been working on a turbine mount. If you remember about, I don't know, three or four months ago, might even be six months ago now, I fixed a small turbine. Well, this is going back home now. And I made a, a mount for it to go. They've got a short length of telegraph pole, about half a length and I uh, got them to put that mount that in a hole and I've made this and you see those there and there they'll go around the telegraph pole and some big heavy duty screws put in there and that'll do nicely because it's only a small turbine and I'll just show you how it will fit If I need to, I could just wrap a couple of layers of insulating tape round there and up the top, just to, but it's pretty good. That would just sort of tighten it up a bit more. So there we go, just spent a, an hour or two just sorting that out most of the time spent sourcing the materials digging through my piles of miscellaneous steel to see what fits what anyway when we get round to doing this which hopefully will be sometime this week if I have the opportunity I'll bring the camera with me and show you it in situ and here we are I'm just starting to plant the potatoes in the glass house. 
this next row has been partially filled. I'll water them in and that'll do and we've still got some more so we'll get at least another two rows if not three and this is Pentland Javelin I tried to get Aaron Pilot but they were all sold out so let's just see how we get on with these it's uh, another thing and you know with the warmer weather and whatnot and these potatoes have been chitting so the eyes are starting to grow on and of course they've been chitting in warm and light so they won't get too long don't want long leggy shoots on these potatoes right I shall crack on all part of the seasonal process And here's the trailer that I sort of reworked, rebuilt. Not quite finished, but we've had to use it. But it seems to behave itself very nicely. And on it is a load of cypress. Now this was part of a shelter belt and it was wind snap. So it snapped off at about sort of four foot up just where you, you know there's some of this cypress if you don't if you don't look after it or prune it up it tends to get really branchy at about four foot and that's where it snapped but as you can see some of it's really quite big that's 12 14 inches across but there you go I will stack that up and that will sit there for at least two years and then it will make beautiful firewood try and burn it any sooner and the sap is a bit sticky so you'll get uh, tar in the chimney but give it a good air drying and it's brilliant stuff and quite hard or this particular uh, type of cypresses because there are many um, hybrids and what have you anyway I'm just going to crack on with that it's a beautiful day although the sun just happens to have gone in just as I'm talking to you but it'll be out again in another five minutes. Such a difference from the early part of this video. So let's crack on. So that's all that cedar or cypress um, unloaded. Now then, we've got the fibers on this tire starting to uh, split and it's been I had a slow puncture for a while and I fixed it once but obviously not properly so there's something else going on so the fixothon continues and we'll have to sort that one out I'll have to go to my store of uh, miscellaneous wheelbarrow tires and inner tubes and, and uh, select a, a different case and inspect the tube but there's something wrong could be the valve maybe it's a very slow um, leak though, you know, it might take up to a week to go down but it did sit in the shed over winter and it obviously sat on there and uh, well, there you go, that's what happens when you use second hand tyres but it's recycling isn't it? Anyway this is Home Life 19 virtually finished, it is February the 26th we're still in lockdown I had my vaccination last week um, and life continues but the sun's out what a huge difference that makes hope everybody's well and I will catch up with you very soon comments and questions are very welcome and um, cheers for now <laughs>